I think that vitamin D deficiency is probably the most common medical condition in the world. Whether you live in India, Asia, Australia, or here in Brazil, probably upwards of 50% of the population of both children and adults are at risk for vitamin D deficiency. And why you should care, because we think not only is vitamin D critically important for your bone health, but it's equally important for helping to maintain your overall health and well-being, reducing risk of many chronic illnesses from diabetes to multiple sclerosis to rheumatoid arthritis, heart disease, common cancers, and even infectious diseases like tuberculosis and influenza. Well, the recommendation is that your blood level, if you, if you want your doctor to order it, is to get 25-hydroxy vitamin D, and we like for everybody to be at least 30 nanograms per ml. And the Endocrine Practice Guidelines Committee recommends 40 to 60 nanograms per ml, which is ideal. Children, if they take 1,000 units of vitamin D a day, can usually reach that level. And adults, the recommendation is at least 1,500 to 2,000 units a day. And that's both in the summer and winter, so it doesn't matter. Uh, every day, to be taking about 1,500 to 2,000 units a day. And if you're obese, where BMI is greater than 30, you may need two to three times more vitamin D to satisfy that requirement. In my book, um, the vitamin D solution that now has just come out uh, in a uh, Portuguese version uh, here in Brazil, um, is a three-step process. So yes, you could get a little bit from your diet. And so typically, you would get it from oily fish, it's like salmon, mackerel, herring, right? But you'd have to eat it every day because it's only about 500 to 1,000 units in a serving. There are essentially no foods that naturally contain vitamin D, other than maybe mushrooms that are exposed to sunlight. But again, you have to eat them every day. So you cannot get enough vitamin D from the diet. Humans have always depended on sun for their vitamin D requirement. And that's the problem. Because most people now are working indoors. They're playing on their computers. And even they go outside, they've been told by the dermatologist never to be exposed to direct sunlight because of the worry about skin cancer. And so it's a three-part process, some sensible sun exposure, as I point out in the book, getting it from your dietary sources like fish and uh, maybe mushrooms exposed to sunlight, and then definitely take a supplement. That's the only way to guarantee you'll be vitamin D sufficient. So we've done studies and we've shown, for example, if you live above Atlanta, Georgia, you can't make any vitamin D in the wintertime. So it doesn't make any difference what time of day. But if you live, say, here in Brazil at this latitude, then uh, exposure from about 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. is the best time. In the early morning, even though the sun is shining like at 7, 8 o'clock in the morning, you essentially make no vitamin D because the sun comes in at a blank angle and the vitamin D producing rays are being absorbed by the ozone layer. So the way sunscreen works is it absorbs ultraviolet radiation, the same radiation that makes vitamin D. So if you put a sunscreen on with a sun protection factor of 30, it will absorb about 98% of the vitamin D producing rays. So it reduces your ability to make vitamin D in your skin by about 95 to 98%. Sure, well that's why in my book, it's a three-part solution. And at the end of the book, I have tables telling you anywhere on the globe, any time of the year, how long to stay outside to get some sensible sun exposure. And I'll give you an example of how important your body is in making vitamin D from sun. If you're in a bathing suit out on the beach and you get a light pinkness to your skin 24 hours later, it's equivalent to ingesting about 20,000 units of vitamin D. So your body has a huge capacity to make vitamin D. And so here in Brazil, maybe to go out 5, 10, 15 minutes, never get a sunburn between the hours of 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. will definitely help maintain your blood level of vitamin D. But to guarantee it, definitely take a supplement. Well, our studies have shown that when you're exposed to sunlight, it's actually the living cells in your skin that make vitamin D. 
So as a result, no matter how much you wash yourself, you could never remove the vitamin D from those living cells. So in my opinion, you could take a shower immediately after going out to the sun. It will not influence how much vitamin D you make and absorb into your body. So it turns out that uh, even the Institute of Medicine now recommends that children over the one year of age and all adults be taking 600 units of vitamin D a day. So 200 and 400 units is not enough. But the Endocrine Society's recommendations suggest that during the first year of life, 400 units a day at least, and up to 1,000 is perfectly safe. For children over one year of age, 600 to 1,000 units a day, and for adults, 1,500 to 2,000 units a day is what's recommended by the Endocrine Society. I personally recommend to just guarantee vitamin D sufficiency, not worry about toxicity, that you could take 1,000 units for children and two to 3,000 units for adults. Yeah, I think that uh, part of the problem is that uh, everybody has been taught that vitamin D is a very toxic fat soluble vitamin. And this originates from the 1950s when there was an outbreak that they believed of vitamin D intoxication in children that caused lots of problems. And as a result, in Europe, they banned fortification of anything with vitamin D. And even today, that's still the case. And so many countries have followed uh, the European countries. We're now beginning to realize, however, that because people are not outside any longer, that was their major source of vitamin D, all of a sudden vitamin D deficiency is now a major health problem. So in the UAE, for example, up to 90% of adults are found to be vitamin D deficient. In New Delhi, India, 35% were found to be severely vitamin D deficient children. Right? Even in Thailand, up to 40 to 50% of children and adults found to be vitamin D deficient. And a recent study here by Dr. Marisi showed that at least 40% of Brazilians are at risk for vitamin D deficiency. And that included doctors, students, and even uh, indoor and outdoor workers. Yeah, I think that that is the very important issue. I think that we need to convince government agencies not only to begin to fortify foods with vitamin D, but more importantly, to make sure that that fortification is enough. So for example, in the United States, they recommend 100 units per serving, say of milk, eight ounces of milk. But I think that it should be at least 200, if not maybe even 300. Because if you want to have a child get 1,000 units of vitamin D a day from your diet, right, you would need to drink 10 glasses of milk if it contained 100 units. But if it had 300 units, then you don't have to drink three glasses, and they were getting all the vitamin D that they need. So I think that it is important for healthcare professionals associated with the government activity for fortification to begin to fortify foods that are commonly used by children and adults. So that includes dairy products, possibly pasta, bread, really staples of our diet to be able to boost everybody's increase in vitamin D. In the United States, for example, we did a seminal study showing you could add vitamin D to orange juice, and it's a good source of vitamin D and calcium. I think that often scientists, when they review uh, requests for research, don't really appreciate the fact that vitamin D really has a lot of health benefits. They consider it just a vitamin, and they don't really see how serious and important it is to be doing further research. But I think that it's critically important to fund this kind of research because only by doing that and beginning to understand all the health benefits of vitamin D can we finally convince government agencies and healthcare professionals to be getting our patients and the population at large to increase their vitamin D intake and improve the vitamin D health 